I remember the walk to school that morning, and it was this incredibly blue, blue, blue sky. Just quintessential fall, early September day. Um, it was like a normal day at first. We have this really nice kind of um, gathering area outside our school where the students would line up and I would ring a bell, old-fashioned school bell, to just mark the beginning of school. And we stood there and the kids duly filed into the building and as they just were almost the door closed behind them, I looked up and there was a silver plane that was sort of framed in the blue sky of the building. And I thought, how beautiful. And you know how the parents all chat in the yard, and Vin and I were chatting, and there was a little kid in the yard, and it must have been, I don't know, kindergarten or something. But when the plane went over, and this sticks out in my mind because it's just so, I mean, the kid was just learning how to read. And he goes, look, Mommy, it says American Airlines. We happened to be just coming up in the hallway and um, hanging our backpacks up right against the window and the window faced the World Trade Center. So I actually did see the first plane hit the first building and that's an image that is pretty much forever ingrained. We were here. Do you remember anything about those moments standing out here? I mean, I remember hearing it. I heard the loudest noise I've ever heard in my life. I had a breakfast meeting in the World Trade Center that morning. I, I phys physically saw, like when you grab a blanket and you, and you put like a air into it and it creates that wave, I, I physically saw a wave come down the North Tower. I ran down the stairs to J Street and I looked up and, and saw just this fiery hole in the World Trade Center. I used to leave my son's stroller down at the bottom of the stairs and I would carry him up so he was in my arms. And I just heard the loudest noise I've ever heard in my life. I remember just running down the stairs and I looked at the building and then running up the stairs and then down the stairs and up the stairs. The idiot that I am, I actually ran back to get my briefcase, grabbed my briefcase and instead of running out to West Street like everyone else, I actually ran out through the plaza between the two towers. It was the, in my judgment, the quickest way out of there. So I got out of the plaza running toward Church Street, um, you know, with my briefcase over my head and there was absolutely things dropping from left and right. And at that moment we stood in the plaza and thought, what should we do? I brought the kids upstairs and we started our day. The kids were like, we, we kept talking about things that kids talk about. We were talking about Spongebob and stuff. I remember being in the classroom beforehand and we were just, it was just a normal day. And I started walking east on, I think, Barkley toward Broadway. And I stopped mid-block and uh, was just looking. And, you know, then, and, and then, <laughs> And then you saw the people jumping. I was the one that was going around to the classrooms, you know, telling teachers, whispering in their ear. I couldn't even believe the words that were coming out of my mouth. So I took my daughter Janice upstairs to um, Peter's class, the kindergarten class. Because I thought, you know, God forbid if something's going to happen, if she's playing or doing something, she'll never know. I think there was just a general sense of what do we do? Do we stay? Do we go? And I, I can't remember exactly what the school was saying to us, but we were pretty much staying in that, in the lobby. I think at that point it was sort of like, don't leave. We were encouraging people to stay because I just thought, where are you going to go? wasn't sure what was happening with the kids, if it was fine for them to stay at school or not. So I went out on the plaza to take a look. And then at that point, when I walked around the corner, that was when the second plane hit. So I saw the second plane hit. I remember Tony coming in with her radio and as she sort of skidded onto these benches and she said, there's a second plane. 
and it's gone to the second tower. And she mentioned something about Stephen. It was crystal clear, well, to me anyway, that when the second plane went in, that this, is, this was war. Um, so I remember plotting my course on the way to school. So when I got to school, I had debris, I was covered, littered, littered with material. Um, and I remember signing the kids out, and I remember Tony coming to me and saying how, um, you know, we've talked about it, we should stay, and, and, and the way I, I put this is I never tell Tony what to do, but that day I did. I said, you know, get the kids, we're leaving. You know, but we think we've talked about it, and I was like, get the kids, and we're leaving. When the second plane hit the second tower, that, uh, I think you were out there, remember the ball of fire yeah. that came up Greenwich Street? Yeah. And that's when I, I I felt the heat, I felt the pressure, and I thought, oh my God, there's kids up there. We were going up to classrooms, getting kids, bringing them down, and trying to be systematic about that, trying to re you know, record, document who was leaving. When I came down, I met Alyssa at, those, at the bottom of those steps, and I asked her what she wanted me to do. She, she wanted me to try to keep the parents calm, and if, if a parent wanted their child, for me to get the child out the classroom so we could we would still have control of who's in and out the building. She said, who wants their kid? I'm making a list. I remember leaving school um, like almost as soon as we got in the classroom. I remember being in the classroom with there being like um, a lot of like kind of crowded, like commotion and being told that uh, my parents are downstairs to pick me up. We had to like file, file down the stairs. We went downstairs. We didn't know why we were going downstairs. And we all sat on the benches and we kind of waited for our parents to get us. I came down after class and just waited there. I think that I was, I was sitting on like a bench or something. That's right. Yeah. I remember my mom coming, like coming into the, at the front staircase of the school, like scared and like out of, bre and out of breath. And that's when I, I, I actually noticed that something was wrong. I distinctly remember not wanting to leave the school. And my dad, had me like pulling on this arm while I was holding onto the door of the school with this arm saying that I didn't want to leave. We walked down the stairs and in fact I said to Ella when we walked down the stairs I do not want you to look to the right. Don't look. I was telling them you know look to the left as soon as you come out look left go left go left don't look don't look don't look. And of course Ella and Lily are turning around and, and looking. I remember looking back up at the building and there were pieces falling off and it was kind of it wasn't exactly exciting, but like when you're six years old, um, you don't really understand what's going on, so it doesn't feel exactly scary. You could see all the paper in the air from the buildings, and there was a lot of people were like running around wearing the, you know, the masks. Like gray smoke, debris was everywhere, and people were saying that you had to like cover your mouth. I remember being over my dad's shoulder and like looking back and seeing like these two burning buildings and just thinking, oh my goodness, what's, what's going on? It was as if we walked through a kind of stone forest. People were rooted to the spot. I remember starting to walk up Greenwich and then the tower was going. And I just saw like the top just starting to like crumble and fall. And then we started running and then I was told to just run, so I ran. We were running and, and pushing the kids. Push, I was pushing Luke in the stroller. So Luke was an infant, two, maybe two. Um, so we were running, physically running up Greenwich with the dust cloud on our heels. You know, it was summer, the windows were open, we didn't have air conditioning then. And anybody, it was, it was like a giant communal scream you know what that sound is, it hits you in your stomach. It's just, you know what it is. And the kids are saying to me, what's happening, what's happening, what's happening? And what I said to them was, um, there are people that are dying. I, you know, I didn't, I, that was the truth, that there were people that were dying. I said, but you were all going to be okay. All I was thinking about was picking him up. So as I turn um, back towards the school, the police had already barricaded each block. 
and it was a police woman and I told her my son is in school in Tribeca Learning Center I need to go pick him up she said I'm sorry ma'am we're not letting anybody through between that time and the time that we left the building basically um, all of my kids were picked up by their parents except two I used the phone and um, I called his school and the bomb squad had picked up and they said bomb squad you know hello bomb squad yeah I didn't want to leave and of course I had to follow orders um, and I remember around 1030 we got a call from the district that said we were going to relocate to PS3 we had to evacuate to PS3 right. so we all come down through these steps By the time we were exiting is when the, the chunks of the building were starting to come down. When we left to go to PS3, I mean, we were not on the sidewalk 10 seconds and the second tower fell. Could you hear the building? You could hear it like, like, like that, like scraping against, you know, the concrete. It's a sound that I'll, I'll just never, ever forget. I mean, we were literally saw it and heard it falling behind us. Next thing you know, we're on the block. This dude just rushing us. He's like, come on, come on, come on, you gotta go. And I have no idea what was, what was going on. And like this street seems pretty wide, but that day it was so narrow. There were so many people. And I had my three or four kids that I'm trying to keep close and keep walking. It, there are thousands of people coming and the building's falling and this tremendous cloud of smoke that you see. People were so terrified that they didn't really, they were just running. And one of the kids tripped on the corner and I remember having to like use my body as a shield so that the people didn't run over the kids who had fallen. They were so panicked. Uh, just a, a mess is, is all I saw. I thought it was like Armageddon, you know? We started kind of hurrying towards the corner. And each time we get to another corner, I'd say, oh, let's see if we can keep, you know, going. The memory that stands out is turning around and seeing nothing but smoke in between the buildings. I kind of remember it being a really long walk. You're just worried about everyone making it there. You know, I just try to stay focused on finding him. It took me like two hours to get to him. Actually, before we even got home, we went and got ice cream. We stopped at the corner and got all the kids ice cream and tried to be as normal as humanly possible. And then we went to the local park. And, you know, like every other kid in the neighborhood, Chelsea was out in the park that day. We went to our house and we kept the television off and they had a play date. I said to the kids, and we're gonna make cookies. And so we did. Um, but Ella just confided in me. She said, oh, mom, I immediately went and looked through the curtains. We looked out the window and like, I, I just remember this layer of dust on top of it. It was like that thick. I was the one with the problem. I think they were basically normal, and I was the one with, that had issues. At night, like, as soon as I would lay down, you know, I would just feel these, like, waves of kind of, like, grief. The only way I could deal with it was just to deny it, to deny the intensity of the response, because I had a bigger responsibility than just to my own emotions. I think Tony and I probably fought more in those, in that time frame than ever. It took me six months before I could even look downtown. I asked my mom, like, who did this? Why is this happening? Who got hurt? And even after it, I was just like, is everyone okay? Like, how many people died? Because I was really into, like, who died. My nephew turned and looked at the building and he says, well, I heard a plane went into the building and he looks up and he asked me, he says, well, what kind of people would do something like that? It's hard for me to know as a six, seven, eight or nine year old, the impact that has on a kid. I don't know. They get it on another level. You don't have to give them all of the details. Something like that they get. Nobody really explained to me what happened on that day. Everything just kind of was really silent. I kind of wish I remembered it more. 
it's kind of awkward to like only have certain you know, certain fragments. I mean, I know you were little and you couldn't possibly understand everything that was going on. But when we were watching CNN that night and was everybody CNN was this. crying, you didn't understand everything that happened? I have no idea you were crying. I honestly cannot remember. Oh, Lena was crying. Seriously? Mary was, the whole house was crying. What did you think had happened? I thought there was a fire in the building or something. I had no idea. I was trying to make it out of my own life. Wow, for how long? Until eighth grade. I don't remember how they were. You know, I, it was unimportant to me how they were. You know, it was literally getting them to a safe place. I have anxiety disorder, and um, it, I, I've been told that it stems from September 11th, and it, it's changed my life drastically. And it's hard because I can't do a lot of the stuff that a lot of kids can do without being on medication because I'm on Zoloft right now and um and Ativan for panic and Ativan for panic attacks and um I can't I can't go to school and have a normal school day without being on a medication and a, it's tough I'm a very strong-minded person I mean I, I get over stuff easily my, my dad died a month ago and you know I wasn't as emotionally affected as, uh, as everybody else was because, you know, I'm not really, I'm just good at not reacting all scared to these type of events, you know? So um, I, I share it, but it's not, you know, because like I need strength all the time, you know? These kids were, had to have an altering in, in terms of their perception of the world. I've gotten that question a lot. How, like, we, did you have to, did you get nightmares? Did you have to talk to a therapist? And I'm like, no. I just, it, it didn't affect me as much as it affected anybody else. I guess I, guess I distance myself from it. When, I, when it does, does come up, I, like I don't normally make, make, the, make the connection that I was there and I was, and I was part of it, but it's more of something like away, distant. I remember things kind of cartoonish, as like a, as if I was like looking at myself watching the event. I've been having panic attacks. It feels like nothing in the world could be more terrifying than what I'm experiencing, and I, it feels like I'm gonna die. Like right then and there, I'm just gonna die, and it's it's so scary that so, like I had one really bad one where I ended up in the hospital, and. Um, it's so scary that sometimes you wish like you should you could die because anything is better than what you're feeling it's always there and that's what i'm saying about those kids it's always there